offices, family business, owner managed services across all industries. Um, it's not just for it. It is advice to family businesses in terms of fostering their, their own and we have a bit of that sharing um, today, as well as any non audit services. That would be accounting services, payroll services. Some businesses might need those specific um, functions of which uh, PwC provided as a department within the PwC office not far away from here in Midrand that we do offer. So um, ultimately this is just a, a short synopsis of it. Secretarial services as well for those um, of yourselves that are, have companies and um, also a function within that. I'm happy to discuss afterwards if there's any questions in that regard of how we can how we can assist. I'll maybe start off in the, our discussion, maybe to set the scene of um, we all know that family businesses is the backbone of our South African economy. Um, and it's built for us on resilience of the family business and their and their adaptability um, in terms of the, the unique blend in personal touch and professional management that, that we see. If we look at the, the, the private companies that's not family businesses, what do, we, what do we know and what do we see? We see them measuring their successes in quarterly results. Well, family businesses measures their successes in generations. So it's a, truly the preservation of family legacy and values that family businesses and actually showcase and, and, and maintain. Um, the introductions were done, so thank you for that. I think we, both myself, Eunice and, and Lucia, um, has, has been truly um, introduced. I'll maybe share Maybe before I get Lucia and Eunice's views on and insight and in specific aspects, the importance for us is today to welcome the change that the next generation can bring to family businesses, as well as to to assist them in preparing to take the reins in a in a family office. Um, as part of my opening remark, I'll maybe leave I'll, I'll position two comments. What we've seen is the most successful family offices, they, stri they strike a balance between professional management on the one end and responsible ownership on the other. But it can only truly be, be, um, be achieved through maintaining a healthy family dynamic. However, with that being said, through surveys and studies over several years, it's indicated and, and proven that unfortunately only 30% of family business uh, see the second generation and only 16% of family businesses transition into the fourth generation. So, truly there is a lot of a high rate of failure that's that position on family businesses and it's it's a, amidst various key challenges that we'll unpack today in our discussion. The last comment that, that I would want to leave as an open, opening remark is around we all know we're on the verge of the fourth industrial revolution. It is the impact that the digital transformation will have on all businesses. We've all heard of Gen AI and the impact that Gen AI will have on family businesses of the future in terms of how those family businesses will be able to operate, how they will be able to compete, and how they will be able to thrive in the global but also in the local setting from South African point of view. Or maybe Tunis bring you in on this. Um, I've mentioned earlier the balance between uh, the professional management side and the uh, the family dynamic. In your view, which of some of those 
critical challenges that family businesses face. Okay. Thanks, Arma. I think the most critical challenge there is obviously balancing your professional management with your family dynamics. So one key issue is obviously establishing that healthy governance. So it's crucial to balance your governance with your professional governance. So how do we overcome this? And that's really what developing robust succession plans, ensuring a smooth transition for leadership, and also the next gen that's coming into your families, identifying and developing your new leadership. So obviously with your next gen coming in, your next generation, the next leaders, so also, you know, firming them up to take the reins. And then obviously ensuring the transparent communication. Having that communication, having those meetings and gearing them up to take the reins for the business. Okay. So what I've heard from you is the big buzzword always is succession plan. For those that are aware of it and for those that might not be aware of it, um, Lucia, the importance of succession planning in a family business. Can you maybe enlighten us? I'll definitely do so, Arman. So I think succession planning is mo the most critical, but as well the most challenging decisions that um, family business leaders need to take. It's more than just selecting the next generation of leaders, but it's also passing down relationships, expertise and experiences. But I think the succession planning ensures the health and longevity of the business. It also ensures that it endures beyond the current generation and create that lasting legacy I don't refer to. Yes, we've mentioned many a times, and I've probably mentioned now a few times, professionalize Z. So in the family context, how do you professionalize that succession plan, that, that the whole process of itself? So professionalization is really crucial, right? It's, it involves documenting and embedding the procedures the governance, the knowledge, experience, values, and obviously the business relationships of the incumbent generation. So creation of a family constitution is important, central to the professionalization of processes. So it's defining who can become a shareholder of the family business, establishing the business goals, the missions, the values, and outlining the business models for future generations. So it's really about implementing the corporate governance and family structures. No, did you just that's something we can afterwards truly really explore and unpack for those that's interested in how that's managed and facilitated through our processes. Um, I mentioned earlier the, four, uh, the, the fourth industrial uh, revolution that's uh, upon us. Now, throughout PwC Africa Next Gen survey that was conducted towards the end of 2023, beginning of 2024, um, it was done across 11 countries in, in Africa. Um, there's a global snippet as well, or global survey, but this was done for Africa. Um, more than 100 families participated. So if there's family businesses, which I think there's all of you are, we're happy to have you participate in the next survey in that regard. Uh, but through the 100 families that we surveyed, it was one of the, the, the most critical elements that came out was um, to keep family businesses competitive was that they need to commence from an Africa and South Africa group their focus on AI initiatives. So we'll explore this maybe just a, a bit further in our discussions that we, that we have. So Lucia, maybe artificial intelligence as we all know, brief in short, AI. How will that transform family businesses? Thanks, Arman. Yes, AI is definitely a game changer in family businesses. As the survey I've not mentioned, 61% of the African business leaders said that the way AI will affect the business in the way they create, develop, deliver, and capture value is going to be, a, going to be significant. So in my experience, the integration of innovation, and especially now referring to, to AI, is a balancing act between the traditional way of doing things and innovation. It's definitely a gradual process. First, you need to get your buy-in from the current leadership, and then slowly introduce the new technologies along the way. Mm. The survey also conducted the, the, the CEOs of family business. So um, whichever role or designation they had, they commented 
to say, and more than half of them commented to say, their businesses, being family businesses, would not exist in 10 years' time. So that's truly a, a, a significant statement that they're making without any form of innovation. Um, you're just, just thinking about that in itself. Your thoughts on those statements that was made by the family leaders? So it's really a reality, Arman. So the survey really highlights the existential crisis for many family businesses. So I heard a very interesting saying the other day. And obviously with AI coming in, a lot of people are utilizing it to become the market leaders. And the saying goes, it's not AI that's going to replace people, but people and businesses and family businesses that utilize AI that will replace people. So I think for the next gen, they really have that unique responsibility to navigate this landscape and bring these AIs and new technologies into the family businesses to make them these market leaders. So developing early AI strategies is really important to remain competitive in these environments. The willingness to explore new ideas while respecting traditional values of family businesses is also quite crucial. So each generation really brings its own strengths. The incumbent generation with their business relationships, but the new generation with technological advances and the AI that's coming in to really secure the business's legacy. Yes, yeah, so where, where are we currently? So we're talking about innovative means to be able for a family business to continue, to be able to, to provide for family for their families and the employees uh, as part of it. Lucia, you mentioned earlier bridging the gap between transitional, or the traditional I should say, and the innovative uh, approaches because those are two contrasting um, approaches between your traditional and your innovative approaches. Any thoughts around how you can reach that gap? I think it's not an easy bridge to gap, but constant communication with the current leadership is key. And it's not about rejecting the traditional methods outright, but it's about phasing them out gradually. Um, this approach get, involves the getting the buy of the current stakeholders and slowly introducing them the innovation. This ensures for the smoother transition and also keeps the trust with the business and the family. So there's a caveat problem to attach. You yeah? need to hear and a, a communication and it's over it's over time in itself. You know, maybe just focusing on on that is there true risk and rewards. I've spoken about sustainability for family business, but incorporating artificial intelligence next generation and all of those into into the processes. Is there any risk in the world? So I think firstly with all this AI and technological advances it can be quite daunting and overwhelming for family businesses and businesses alike. But implementing this AI is really a marathon, it's not a sprint. So moving too fast can obviously increase your risk, but moving too slow can make you lose up to your competitors as they become more often favor proven technologies and this is obviously due to limited capital but this landscape is really shifting so private equity is becoming more favorable and attractive and growing willingness to innovate is really in need now so responsible adoption of AI is necessary ensuring the family businesses gain from technology while protecting the trust premium that the business has with employees and customers I've heard Eunice ask to talk to responsible adoption of AI scheme. And I think that systems and needs in every family business in a different and it's the, have got a different meaning. But Lucia, if you were to take that meaning of responsible <coughs> adoption of AI, next steps for the current generation in the family business, if you can maybe just give us a few points for it. What's the next steps for the current generation? Thanks Samara, your three comes to mind, the one being resources. I have one family business with the family values, let me be rather say that, and then lastly, listening. I think from the resources perspective, there's definitely two broad avenues that you can explore from AI, either transforming your own current operations or partner with other companies or family ventures alike. These are not mutually exclusive, so there can be a mix between the two approaches. But I think it's important for the current generation, the current generation, 
to decide how to direct the business resources in, in this avenue. And secondly, I think it's important that the family values and the business purpose remains intact and that everybody is aware of why are we doing or why are we going on this venture. And then lastly, I think important is, is to listen, to listen to the new generation and to hear them out and then also share from your experiences because we also transferred, uh, me, the current generation also transferred from paper to Excel. So that was also a giant leap for mankind. So I think just to listen to the concerns and the um, ideas and then take it forward as a united front. So synopsis, strong and clear communication by the current generation to maintain trust in, 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 in all facets within the business. Yeah. You know, you're probably the younger of myself and Lucia on this. Next steps for the, for the next generation? So just for everyone in the room, I drank meetup this evening before already on the laptop. But uh, just for the next generation, and that also for me is split into three parts. And it's really getting your license to earn trust. So you don't want to just trust your birthright, you know, you want to get your necessary solid education, get experience in working experience outside the family business, so that when you do go into your family business, you have that necessary confidence to take on the future leadership. Uh, secondly is being clear on your motives. So the nation should be clear when they want to join the family and what's their passion and what's their motives, not again just joining the family business on their birthright. And then lastly, really becoming familiar with the rules and regulations. Obviously growing up in the family business, that is installed, but the nation should really position themselves for being able to navigate those ethical landscapes, you know, looking at corporate governance. And, and also being the ones that are responsible for this AI adoption bringing in these new technologies. And like I mentioned before, each generation comes with its own advantages and knowledge. And the next gen can really be that next generation that brings in the AI and technology to that value to the business. Thank you, Eunice and, and Lucia. Well, I'll put a few questions afterwards, but maybe closing remarks from my end would be maybe just to leave with um, certain points with our uh, is <coughs> The, um, the next generation is you truly in a unique position because you can direct the, the, the leadership of family business in, 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 in the future. Um, and the reason why I say that is there is basically you can contribute ideas, you can spearhead initiatives and also transition that um, change over in the, in the leadership roles. Um, I think the next generation landscape from Africa and South Africa is not just merely to propel innovation in itself, right? But it's also to give strategic direction to the family business um, in all facets of challenges. We all know that there's the, the big challenge of the, um, the digital disruptions that we do have. Um, Maybe that just where PwC fit in. PwC fits in along the journey of all family family businesses, whichever facet you in from a from a digital or from a transformative uh, position. Uh, also through succession planning and all of the, the processes we deal with on a daily basis. So we truly have to to journey with yourselves. And I'll ask Lucia, there's a short video that we just want to showcase and then afterwards we will maybe just close it from our discussions. Yeah. Yeah.
when I joined my parents' business 40 years ago, I would now be standing in their shoes, with my own two children joining the business as well. What an honor. The road ahead will never be straight and smooth, but I will do my best to help them not make the mistakes we made in ensuring our continued legacy. I've already reached out to my trusted family advisor at BWC and then mobilizing their family business team to assist us with the transition. They brought a lot of new yet relevant concepts to the table. We discussed corporate and family governance, who can sit at the table, what the family's goals and values are, whether we see ourselves as family first or business first, just to name a few. I look forward to delving deeper into each of these in the coming months. One of the decisions we are really facing is how to involve Avishola in the family business of the future. When we adopted it four years ago, we never thought it would be something that we would need to consider. She's part of the family, and everyone would welcome her into the family business, if she wants to join. I wonder how everyone's outlook would have been different if we adopted her at an older age, and how would my perspective change if my children got divorced. My son's wife is already involved in the family business, and I sometimes wonder what would we do if that happened? That would turn out to be a new type of challenges altogether. Ultimately, the values and principles that were instilled in us by our parents will shape our future and guide the generations to come. It's important that I pass down our history and legacy to the next generation and ensure that they are aware of our roots and the goals we set for ourselves. My parents always said that honesty is the best trade. Once you give your word, you honor it, no matter what the cost is to you. Treat others as you would want to be treated, no matter who they are. These are some of the key principles I try to also instill in my children. My father and I struggled to openly communicate with each other. He was the head of the business and a strong leader. I was his son and was taught that I should respect my elders. I learned that later speaking up with new ideas, even if they were different from my parents, is not disrespectful. It is innovative and can take the business to new heights. Father, it's how I share my ideas that shows up how I respect him. This is one of the key things I'm trying to achieve with my daughter and son. I want them to feel comfortable to discuss any idea with me without cutting them off. I want to be able to listen, encourage them to try new things, and allow them to fail and learn from their mistakes. That is how I learned my most valuable lessons. Another challenge will be to ensure that the external board members see the family is treated in a professional manner with fair, market-related compensation. Like all things in life, there's a balance to be found between emotional and economical value. We see ourselves as business first, so we will make sound business decisions to ensure that it lasts for generations. The BWC team has also helped me tremendously with my stake value. I feel much more secure that my wife and business are well looked after. After the heart attack I survived last year, I realized again how fleeting life can be. What a fortunate man I am. It is on me to ensure that we as a family stay together and we do not allow the business to come between us. It almost came to me and my parents. So now, because we love each other, we will use the BWC team to assist us in drawing up our family constitution and planning our ownership strategy. We will be able to talk about important issues that will help our family business to grow. I'm getting my affairs in order. What about you? Just the last. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, we thank you, Manara. Uh, Chambers for, for, for allowing us and specifically the Harding chapter and your, yourself for, for us to be here. It's, it's truly something that is close to our hearts. We know that all of the um, discussions that we have is family, businesses is very personal and we deal with it in that manner that each circumstances and as such is, is, is truly personal to yourselves. So thank you. Thank you so much, um, Evelyn. Yes, and Lucia for that insightful presentation. I'd like to now open up the floor for questions and answers. Anybody that has questions and answers, please direct it to the speakers. Yes, Lucia. Yes,
family businesses strike a balance between maintaining tradition and embracing innovation brought by the new generation? That was actually one of my comments, and if you don't mind me elaborating. I think the important thing is, is not to reject tradition or the traditional way of doing things, understand where you come from, have that conversation and reach the gap to the new generation with the new innovation. And I think the video also spoke about it. It's not what you say, it's how you say it, it's how you approach it. Um, the factors that we mentioned earlier is the open communication, um, frequent communication with the stakeholders to get their buy-in. And Eunice also mentioned it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. So there was a reason why it worked up to now, but there's also a reason for change. So it's to find that sweet spot of the world to, to merge the two. Thank you so much, Lucia. Um, another question from the floor. What strategies can be used to ensure that the new generation is adequately prepared for leadership roles without causing friction or resentment within the family structure? So I think, you know, just to add on to what you are saying, and, and again, we touched on that as well, is that solid education and getting the work experience outside of the family business. Uh, a buzzword that Adman mentioned was disruption, and especially the older generation, and you get anyone for that matter doesn't like change, right? We all don't like change, we like to put things away for us. But if we do not go towards those lens of getting the new AI, getting the new tech, we're going to fall behind as family businesses to other market leaders. So again, getting that necessary education, getting that necessary experience outside the family business, and everyone actually being open to this change, whilst all respecting their traditional values. Thank you so much, Yus. I can maybe add to it is, with reference on a strategy in discussion, it's just conceptually what it means is the, con the family constitution exists out rooms, chambers within in the house, to be able to achieve exactly that, that there is transparency and it's well known of what is the processes. Um, we've elaborated a lot on professionalization because we know business is professionally managed and, 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 as, as such with the family dynamic element here. And this is to, to assist with professionalizing the family where it is who's the members, who is part of the family, that's unpacked as a foundation and the first step to the house. Um, your goals and visions, because family businesses need, need to determine family first or business first. There's no right or wrong answer in that regard, but what, what is the importance to the family in that regard? What is our values? What's our goals? So that's part of the foundation. And then the owner business model is effectively the strategy. Where are we going with the business in itself? And is the business sufficient to cater for the full family? Or do we need to divest or have other operational activities with it? The top layer corporate governance we all know in terms of the business in itself, next CEO, next member, all of that type of communication. The middle part talks to exactly that point to say that transitioning of the next generation is the educational purpose that they need to just first obtain educational uh, qualifications, external practical experience outside. Where will they fit into it? They can contribute truly to the business in itself, and that's under the family governance um, government itself. And the last rumors this um, I should actually say the family governance is also philanthropy. So there is a family office. So beyond just being a stakeholder in, in the in your own business, it is also what other needs there. So it's not all family members. This may be truly um, enthusiastic or maybe passionate of going into the business. They might want to explore something else through through the ventures. And that's where that comes together to determine the passion and that's effectively what always asks us or the families ask us. How regularly do we need to revise this? It depends on the growth of the business and the family and in itself. But it's five, between five and ten years. Because this is a living document. It, it basically always transitions. The last room I just talked to it is basically the roles 
of the family members within the, the family. So not within the business. What roles does each one have within the family in itself? And lastly, the, the people talk to itself. So it's the, the people within it, because that's the that's the heart of the family side as well as the business. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any more questions? Uh, I'd like to know how do you really ensure that the next generation is ready to take over the management of the family? Very important. <coughs> in terms of? No, many terms of organization. So that's, I, I ended it off actually to say each family business is unique. And it's truly the case. The, the reason for that is the readiness is determined by the communication and understanding what is required to be able to take up a specific role either within the family or within the business. And that's the predetermined and hence proactive communication, understanding what is required to achieve. Families that we've consulted with and Eunice had and Lucia can attest to it, certain families is of the view that tertiary education is not required as a prerequisite. that you can fulfill a position within the business, but you're not going to be as part of the executive committee. You need to start there, but you need to understand the values of the business and do you work your way through because that you through that you build trust within your fellow employees because you're being an employee and you're not entitled. You just mentioned birthright. And that's a critical um, factor. Birthright doesn't give you the specific authority. That certain families are very um, strict and hard fast on that. Other families ought to be build your experience outside, come back, and we will then assess through the process which is the appropriate growth. But through succession planning, it's pre-identified or you will it be an external party who takes over the, the, the managing director the senior role, or will it be sourced within the family? But that's something that's communicated. And there's also been an exit strategy to the existing um, patriarch or, or CEO, because they've got knowledge. So it's basically the mentoring through those processes. So it's a, it's a different layer, layered process to it. All the while still expecting, you know, old traditions and the incumbent generation and what family is stable, but also adding that value, like you said, with all the advances with the world, technology, etc. And I, I think maybe if I can add, um, it's, it's again, it's not a marathon. It's not a sprint, it's a marathon. And um, the most of the, the audience is actually uh, the next generation. Some incumbent generations in the room, but I think it's difficult for an incumbent generation to let go. So it's also to respect them in that letting go process that it's not going to happen overnight. And that we've seen on many of the consultations we've had, that's the tricky part. They know they need to let go, but it's not so easy if that was your, your baby or your brainchild that you brought to this point. I think it's back to the tradition versus innovation, it's the open communication. It's not what you say, it's how you say. And then also not just being entitled to your birthright, but to actually show your contribution to the family business. Thanks. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Um, one more question, more like a comment and observation that speaks to that question and exactly what you said now is that the older generation feels like it's difficult to let go of leadership because they don't feel like the younger generation knows what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Or they feel like uh, whatever they've done so far is going to become obsolete or has no value. Whereas the younger generation has a mindset that, okay, well, whatever you're doing is old school. Like, you don't know what you're doing now. You, know, you just need to like, go sit somewhere and try to home something. <laughs> so, you see, that's not the right conversation. <laughs> so, so, you know, though, that conversation is actually very toxic. Whereas, like, to, to maybe enable um, the generation to transition from traditional to innovation, I feel like maybe there needs to be regular straps Strap meetings as a family and family business, um, where an outside person comes in and not your child telling you what you need to do. An outside person comes in telling you what the market um, market trends are or how you can adapt your business to suit the current way of doing things on social media. 
and how they can train your child or train the next generation to be able to adopt that. And then I think traditional leadership would keep in that tradition and be able to transition that. Yeah. I think it goes all back to communication and, and that's the, the facilitation that we do with family businesses is to work through this whole process because the incumbent generation wants to leave the legacy. But they never thought about reaching this point of now letting go. And that's why in Arnott's comment, 30% makes it to the second generation, and only 16 to the fourth generation, because it was never planned for. Um, so I think it's important to plan for that process as well, and include them in that planning process of, of the journey. And the world is changing so quickly, so you make an important point, right? And again, it goes back to what I said, right? They'll trust you if you get that outside education, mm -hmm. get your qualifications. But the world is changing so quickly, that if you don't bring in the necessary specialists into your business, your family business, and keep it in the traditional way, and again, respecting those traditions, you need to move with the times to remain successful and become one. That's not a really easy conversation. It is obviously an overlap period, you know, before. Uh, I just see the outside people that are this is the market trends that everybody's like, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much to the panel for those. Um, answers. Um, if there are no other questions, then I hand you over to us for the vote of thanks. Thank you. First and foremost, a big thank you to the dedicated staff of the Minara Chamber of Commerce. And thank you to the Master of Ceremonies, Mr. Zakir Ali, as well as our guest speakers for the WC, Mr. Herman Extien, Lucia Berg, and Yudhi Spesso. We also extend our sincere thanks to the staff and resources used from Square Technologies. And finally, we extend our thanks to all our guests and all of you that have taken your time out and attended this event. We hope you found this time uh, valuable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.